What is art? I define it as something that provides a translation of meaning to a recipient. Could be vague, could be clear, could be mundane, could be profound, could have multiple interpretations, and can be done in countless ways. Books, films, series, paintings, photography, theatre, street art, sculptures, and so much more can be used to bring across some sort of meaning within the viewer, be it a message, an explanation, a question, or an idea. Side note, contemporary or abstract art is simply raw meaning, without attempting to translate to the recipient at all, unless you include the little placard next to each piece explaining whatever a crudely done rectangle is supposed to mean. Nietzsche's idea that art should dramatise the terror and struggles of existence struck a chord with Rothko, whose work aimed to invoke such primal emotions. So what is entertainment? Simply put, it is a thing that brings across emotion within the recipient. Joy, fear, sadness, humour, awe, excitement, anger, passion, and so on. These are by far not mutually exclusive, and can be expressed in every kind of art form, including anime. Which brings me on to Reincarnated as a Sword, which neither aspires to be art nor entertainment. Instead, it is simply the result of a studio tossing yet another isekai in the pile without thought or aspiration beyond, isekai is popular, so let's make one. If you aren't an avid anime viewer, you might be confused because this probably sounds very interesting. Someone dies and their soul gets trapped within a pointy bit of metal, and presumably they'll need someone to wield them. Surely all of that has incredible potential. But the benefits are potentially huge. The unfortunate person having to adapt to this bizarre new life while learning to bond with their new wielder as they explore this seemingly unique world. Meanwhile, every anime fan upon seeing the title Reincarnated as a Sword would immediately roll their eyes because the sheer number of lazy, predictable isekai with nothing but a single gimmick is staggering. Here's one where she's immortal. Here's one where the guy's best friend gets teleported. Here's one where he's overcautious. Here's one with the guy's hot mom. Here's one with no understanding of economics. Here's one that I keep forgetting about. And here's one that is absolute garbage. While there are rare isekai that turned out to be a lot, lot more than the gimmick first introduced, the way both begin really tells the difference between the two. One shows the firebombing of Japan, while the other has a rushed explanation of stuff we can gather from the title. The first gave a hook and action straight away, while the other treats you like an absolute moron. So plot summary then. Guy wakes up as a powerful sword. No idea if he even has any memories of his previous life or not. A slave cat girl picks him up, gets insane number of abilities, becomes an adventurer, and fights monsters. That was it. Oh no wait, she wants to evolve. Great, why does she want to evolve? Well, her parents died trying to evolve. Okay, so why does she want to evolve? So she can... evolve. Oh. So, what about the characters then? If there's no plot, not even some vague demon lord to kill, then surely the anime must focus on them, right? Well, you got the tin-witted sword bloke who can fly, talk, and use a pair of hands, completely shredding the idea of adapting to being a piece of metal. He's supposed to come across as a fun, wacky character, but that was lost on me the moment he snapped a guy's neck in half. Jesus Christ! Yeah, he was a horrible slaver and deserved to die, but come on. The sword bloke casually killed another human being when he didn't even need to, because he looked evil. Even worse than that though, he has zero ambition beyond helping Fran, and she is insufferably bland. ありがとう。どこの最初から言ってる師匠はすごい剣。すごく嬉しい。ありがとう、彼氏。あ、ノウェイ、シーライクスフード。わあ。アサイドフロムデム、ユーハブアハンドフルオブサイカルタスウォー
the weak adventurers, they're only to show off how powerful Fran is, and the evil noble guy who has a unique skill, literally introduced the moment after Fran gets the ability to steal unique skills. Yeah, it ain't exactly House of the Dragon. There was at least one moment that woke me up for my bored stupor, however. <laughs> oh, I thought. Drama, stakes, a credible threat. So what are they gonna do here? Firewall! Oh, it's solved. But at least we have this guy. Oh, he's dead. Ugh. So that's reincarnated as a sword. No character, no world, no fun, no nothing. Absolutely dead on arrival. So I guess I should speak about Parallel World Pharmacy, which isn't exactly unique. But you know what? Originality isn't what should be judged. After all, Jobless Reincarnation isn't exactly original, but it kicks ass. It's all in the execution. So, Paolo Pharmacy. A highly skilled doctor suddenly dies. Yes, he quite literally drops dead. He wakes up as a young noble whose family is filled with researchers and champions of medicine, but with magic and poor technological development. He discovers he has the ability to create any component he wants, able to see and diagnose other people's ailments, and has his family's vast resources at his disposal on top of having a photogenic memory of every kind of cure there is. The kid that goes on to cure people because he wants to. That was it. To say this one bored me would be an understatement. At university, I once attended an insultingly easy lecture explaining what products and services were by someone who just read off the presentation slides. And that was a thousand times more thrilling than Paolo Pharmacy. You know what? Dragon Pilot was more exciting than Paolo Pharmacy. <laughs> At least in that show, there was a smidgen of hope something could actually happen. Here, there's absolutely nothing for the audience to latch onto. There's no drama, there's no comedy, no thought-provoking ideas, no action, nothing. Just our kid doctor going around curing people with all the knowledge, abilities, access and wealth he could ever want. You are tedious to a degree I have not hitherto thought possible. In Doctor Stone and even High School Prodigies, when the characters made antibiotics, they spent time and care crafting it. Here, kid holds out his hand and poof, it's done. I mentioned in a previous review that what makes characters engaging are their struggles and adversities. Here, there's absolutely nothing for the protagonist nor any character to fret about, so why should I care about their journey? It's like rooting for someone running a marathon versus someone deciding to sleep in. I'm going to care a lot more about someone undertaking a challenge than someone utterly devoid of it. This anime is doubly annoying because the writers had the perfect setup. He was a highly skilled and devoted doctor for Pete's sake. The drama could have come from his desire to help others in this world, but limited by both technology and power struggles. They didn't need magic at all. Paolo Pharmacy could have been really impactful, especially if he loses people, and especially especially if something like the Black Death comes into town. On the other hand, if they wanted to make something fun, they again could have done so easily. Have him casually wandering the street, curing literally everyone. I was hopping along, minding my own business, all of a sudden up he comes, cures me! Make the world treat him like a god. You're all different! Yes! We are all different! I'm not. Have him accidentally crash the whole economy by conjuring so much gold. In fact, the Emperor spent and gave away so much gold in Cairo, Medina, and Mecca that he flooded the market, crashing the metal's value. Have a cartoonishly number of rival doctors trying to catch him. There he is! Have their family members worried about his success? Okay, please stop running. Have a recurring healthy character wanting to be routinely healed? Mr. Corman, you're not even feeling bad. You don't need this scan. If it would make you happy, we could just go ahead and do the exact same thing we've done the last 50 times you've been in here. Take your temperature, draw some blood, and give you a rectal. It's your basic ah, uh, ow, uh, oh! Do something fun with the concept. Same could be said of sword reincarnation. If they wanted to do something fun, they could have. Imagine if this sword entered a world of musket warfare, or in a peaceful world, forcing him to be used as something else. 
He'd make a great ironing board. Or if he really wanted him fighting monsters, they could have made him a diplomat type not wanting a fight while the wielder is impatient and bloodthirsty. Or have him be sought over by a range of minor adventurers wanting to get stronger or richer, so he's stolen and re-stolen over and over. Instead, what we're left with in both these shows is an utter waste of time with no more thought or care beyond, let's make an isekai. Yeah, I understand that behind these shows, there's a dozen companies, each with their own profit targets and commitments, so they would gravitate towards something quote-unquote safe, i.e. an isekai that comes from manga, but come on. There had to been some discussion about what the lead studio should make, and these were the results. What, were they hankering for an early lunch? <laughs> Or is it the case they purely look at the numbers for these manga without looking at the actual story being told? I pick number three. You don't even want to read them first? I was elected to lead, not to read. Number three! It's entirely possible the manga behind such drivel is actually well told, and these adaptations are merely the result of writers having all the talent and passion of a damp sponge. <laughs> あと、失礼します。なんで？ないの？あなたの影。Hey look, shadows. More shadows. More shadows. I guess the writers don't understand how shadows work, nor how physics work, because one cage did all of this. お前はファルマなのか。本当に我が息子なのか。それはそのつもりです。それでも目の前の少年が以前のファルマでないことはわかる。ありがとう。我が息子よ。よし。酸素を消去して。消化。It always amazes me that companies will spend months designing, recording, editing, marketing and much more, but not nail down the story beforehand. Anime has enormous potential to bring across incredible thought-provoking ideas and questions, as well as invoking powerful emotions within the audience. But unfortunately, there are still studios who have zero respect for the medium, nor the audiences watching it. And it's exactly these companies who make such thoughtless tripe and expect people to just consume. Thankfully, such mindless drivel will be forgotten in a month's time, while the great standouts of the genre stay strong. And on that positive note, the one funny thing to come out both of these shows. ねえ、ねえ、メガネがない時はこうするといいよ。ほら、こう。何それ。いいから騙されたと思ってやってみてよ。ははは、got you。あは、ああ。<笑><笑>